Since Dawn is still waiting and August is National Minority Donor Awareness Month, we're sharing an earlier episode called Waiting is the Hardest Part. Just so you know, we're busy planning new powerful episodes that will begin in October. And don't forget, all of our episodes are available wherever you listen to podcasts. Patience requires persistence. When your life depends on it, persistence takes on a whole new meaning. Oh, the worst thing is just like you really, you don't know. Could it be five more years? It's a long wait. That's Dawn Williamson, a mother, a grandmother. She's currently on dialysis, waiting for a kidney transplant. I'm Monica Fox, kidney transplant recipient and director of outreach and government relations for the National Kidney Foundation of Illinois. On this episode, I'll be talking with Dawn to learn how she practices patience during this part of her journey. Hi, Dawn. Thanks for joining us today. Tell me about yourself. Well, I am a girl from Chicago, Illinois, on the south side of Chicago. Just love the city of Chicago. I love traveling and just being out and about. So I have one daughter, two grandchildren, three and 12. So it keeps me busy. I love working for uh, Gift of Hope. And I've worked with Gift of Hope almost 19 years. So it's a it's a fabulous thing. Wow, 19 years with Gift of Hope is amazing. For those listening who might not be familiar with Gift of Hope, they're the organ and tissue donor network here in Illinois. They work with families who are making the precious choice to donate their loved ones' organs after their death so that others can receive life-saving transplants. They do wonderful work. So Dawn, when were you diagnosed with kidney disease? Maybe about four years ago. The nephrologist said, a little things is going on right now. Let's continue to check and see what what it is. And, of course, I'm doing that um, almost every six months. It wasn't doing good. I guess my creatinine was just not great as it could have. And then um, he told me maybe about a year ago, that maybe we will have to start dialysis. Just one day, I just didn't feel well. Had to go to the hospital. They started me dialysis the next day. There are five stages of kidney disease, and often people follow that progression with their medical team and have a plan in place for kidney failure. However, since kidney disease does not have many exclusive symptoms, Many people progress to kidney failure without diagnosis and preparation. They usually find themselves short of breath, feeling ill, and end up taking a quick trip from the ER to the ICU and starting dialysis urgently in the hospital before moving to an outpatient clinic. When were you first diagnosed with kidney disease? The nephrologist, he told me of this process a little while ago, so I knew things could be happening soon. But um, it just took a little time for me, but I knew it was coming. I was pretty ready for it a little bit. So I knew it was inevitable. And that time I just said, okay, that was it. I was in a hospital maybe about, maybe about nine days. Then I started going into the clinic to have my treatment for dialysis. Dawn, what was the transition like for you from inpatient dialysis to in-center treatment? In the hospital, they just do everything for you right there as well. Um, You can't do anything. You can't move around. So, But now, when I'm in the clinic now, it's three times out the week. I ask a lot of different questions on how the machine works and what's happening with the machine and what are they doing with the blood and all of those things. But... It's okay. It's just a long time because I'm on the machine for four hours out the day, three times out of the week. Sometime I read, sometime I sleep, or sometime I watch a little television. It's just time that goes out your day. That's a lot of time out of your life spent to save your life. How does your family cope with you being on dialysis? It's just, it's things that you just have to do. You know, it's almost, I guess, if you have to, like, you have to go to work. 
you go to work and you do what's necessary. Well, I have to go to the clinic. It's no doubt about it. Everybody, they they know how I feel about it, and um, because I don't want to do dialysis at home because I think I'm a little afraid if something happens or anything, an infection happens. So they just think it's better for me to go at the clinic, which is for me as well. It's better. And it's just do what you got to do until you can get that kidney. So everybody's pulling for me. This is what we got to do. Did your doctor ever offer transplant as a treatment to your kidney disease before considering dialysis? He pretty much knew. The nephrologist said that I would um, probably have to go on dialysis. So I, I knew that that was going to be not an option, just it was going to happen. So are you currently listed for transplant? I am listed at the University of Chicago. It was very close to me. I was listed starting July of 2018. Have they told you how long you can anticipate waiting? It can be any time between five to seven years. So that's quite a list, list a time for that. But I guess it's so many people that's waiting for a transplant in this area. And I guess I'm in the Chicago area, that's why the time frame is so long. Five to seven years for a deceased donor kidney is a long time. How does that wait make you feel? Well, it's just been three years, I mean two years, but that's a long time for me already. (laughs) (laughs) It's a lot to cope with. And um, for me, I just have to take it in stride because it's it's life-saving for me. So I have to do it. It's not, oh, wow, you don't want to go to dialysis. You don't want to do this. It's something that I have to do if I want to continue to live, and I want to live. (laughs) I have to see my family, friends. I got to continue to live. So they keep me upbeat about it, and that's the best thing. For me, it is. So while, again, I'm at the clinic, I'm just thinking about, yeah, when I get this kidney, I can't wait to get back on the road because I'm a traveling bunny. I love traveling all over this world. So I have to do it. So no qualms about it. I have to get this kidney and I got to do what's necessary to take care of it. Yes, I agree with you. The wait is the hard part. Are you still working while on dialysis? I'm still working and working a little bit now because of the pandemic. I'm working uh, two days at the work at, at, at the job. I'm the receptionist for Gift of Hope and administration. I do a lot of administrative things with the Gift of Hope. So you're the first face people see when they walk into Gift of Hope. The first thing somebody see is me at the front desk. And I'm smiling when I see everyone, too. Pretty much what I'm doing now. (laughs) I recall seeing your beautiful face the times that I came to Gift of Hope. And now you're working with the organization that's responsible for procuring all the organs that come into this region. And you're working as a part of that team. How does that make you feel? It's great because I know how they work hard for everyone here. And, of course, they'll work hard for me as well, helping me, whatever it is that I need, any questions I need or answers I would need for them. But it's, it's an amazing organization, and I'm glad to be a part of it. So it, it didn't make me feel bad, like, oh, wow, you need a kidney. But I knew a lot of different information about being on the transplant or just be needing a kidney or anything. So because working at Gift of Hope, it helped me to just kind of ease into the transplant uh, for me and see what I needed. So I didn't feel bad about it. It was just something that I had to do, and it was okay because I had a lot of other people at this organization help me along the way with what I needed. You have such a wonderful spirit and positive outlook. 
about waiting for a transplant. But for you, what is the worst part about waiting? Oh, the worst thing is just like you really, you don't know. Could it be more five more years? Or could it be another, a year or two? It's a long wait, and um, I'm just trying to stay positive with that because it's a long wait, and I and I know it is for everyone. And for me, just having to go to the clinic three times out the week, it's a lot because it's the needles, and of course, I don't love a needle, and um, it's just a lot you have to go through. But I continue to keep being positive about it because. At the other end, I know something great is coming there. It's coming. Yes, I agree with you, and I believe it. Something good is coming for you. Your gift is on its way. With such a positive spirit, how do you keep that up while you're waiting? It's not easy, but I, you know what? I just love it because I just think about all the, all the great things that I do. And for me, I think about, as I told you, I love to travel. So I just think about all of the places that I could be going uh, when my kidney comes back <laughs> for me. All the places I love to go. And, and I just love hanging out with my little grandchildren. And they keep me upbeat. Because they're just great kids. I love them. And, um, and my daughter as well. So I'm positive for them and family. They don't talk about it often because we always doing something. It's like this time we can't be anywhere together because of the pandemic. I think we have to all be together home to stay in place. Yeah, the pandemic is making everything much harder including waiting for a transplant. Dawn, what would you say to healthy people that are listening that have two kidneys and can live with just one? What I would say to those people is that, hey, me, I'm on dialysis three times out the week. And if you know me, you know I want to start living more and more. I need that kidney. I have to live. I got to do a lot of, I got a lot of things to do. If you were able to help me with giving me that donation, I will be so thankful. So thankful. And anyone that knows me, I am really a a lady that takes care of everything. And for me, I would love someone to help me so I can get my kidney that I need. So I would really love for anyone listening, I need that kidney. Help me along the way. I really would appreciate that. Thank you. You're listed at University of Chicago. So if someone wanted to end the wait for you and donate their kidney, they could contact your transplant coordinator there, right? That's correct, Monica. I'm at the University of Chicago. Me, Dawn Williamson. I am on that list. Help me along the way if you think that's a great thing. And I'm sure it's a wonderful thing for me. That's what I would love for someone to help me out with. Dawn, thank you so much for spending this time with me, for sharing your personal story. And I believe your gift is on the way. You spend every day working organization that is saving lives and you deserve to be saved thank you so much monica and thank the listeners i've certainly appreciate it have a great day too dawn is one of more than 3300 people currently waiting for a life-saving kidney in illinois you have two options to help save someone like dawn you can explore living donation or you can register to become an organ donor Either way, you give the most extraordinary gift imaginable, life. To learn more about Living Donation, visit nkfi.org. At NKFI, prevention is a major part of our mission. That's why at the end of each episode, you will hear a nutrition tip. Here's Dr. Melissa Prest. Here's today's nutrition tip about happy, healthy holiday eating. The holidays are a favorite tradition that we share with those we love. A part of each holiday are the foods we eat together as we gather for that special day. 
Sometimes just the smell of these foods can bring us back in time to previous holidays and the people we shared those meals with. For people on a medically prescribed diet, it's understandable if you feel a bit anxious about the holidays and the food served. But fear not, you can have your slice of pie and eat it too. When building your holiday plate, think about which of the foods served are your favorites. Build your holiday meal in a similar way you build your everyday plate with a protein, fruit, and vegetable, and grain. If your favorite food or foods are on your diet's naughty list, then focus on portions, portions, portions. It's the portion sizes of your foods that will have the biggest impact. You can also bring a dish or two that fits in with your diet plan to share. It's important to focus on choosing the right foods for you in the days prior to and after the holiday meal to ensure that you can indulge a little bit without causing harm. So relax, enjoy, and eat the pie. With today's nutrition tip, I'm Melissa Press, a registered dietitian nutritionist and the foundation dietitian for the National Kidney Foundation of Illinois. The Journey Continues is brought to you by the National Kidney Foundation of Illinois and sponsored by Donate Life Illinois. To learn more about kidney disease and living donation, visit www.nkfi.org. To register to become an eye, tissue, and organ donor, visit lifegoeson.com. If you enjoyed what you heard today, please subscribe to and leave a review for The Journey Continues in Apple Podcasts or wherever you like to listen. This podcast is produced by Rivet. To hear more great podcasts, visit rivet360.com.